Quantum computing is going to take over the world and crack all of our encryption. These are some of the um, murmurs that you hear. I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, and I get to spend a lot of time at events where um, scientists and specialists will talk about quantum computing. So carry on watching this video. This is just going to be an overview in terms of what is quantum computing and how is that going to affect cybersecurity. So this is not so much of a question we get regularly, um, however it does come up. Um, but I'm lucky enough to spend time at some of the sort of internal GCHQ organised events here in the UK um, that's managed by the GCHQ and other partners of the GCHQ. And the conversation around how far away is quantum technology from breaking all of our cybersecurity and all of our encryption, it does come up quite a bit and it's actually quite um, an interesting subject. So I'm just going to run through where is quantum technology at, um, what, a little bit about the technology itself and how much do we need to be thinking of future threats in cybersecurity from quantum technology. So for anyone that isn't familiar, quantum technology is super uber, uh, uber powerful technology, whereas a normal um, computing system will use binary bits where things are either on or off a zero or one. Uh, quantum computers use something called qubits, which can be in a superposition of either on and off at the same time. Um, when you start looking at that and entanglement in quantum physics, it does get a bit complex, but ultimately that superposition just allows for um, a billion X quantum computing power effectively. And the concern is that that quantum computing power can break regular encryption that we see on modern networks today. So it's not all rosy though, because there are a lot of drawbacks with quantum computers. They have to be run just a degree or two above absolute zero, because even they're very susceptible to noise and even thermal energy um, can create enough um, um, interference effectively to affect the, the way that the qubits interact with each other. So, so there's, a, there's a big problem of needing absolute zero, which is a bit of a trick to pull off. You also need a massive computing system to do that. These things are, I suspect they may even run into the billions and they're only really managed by big organizations like Amazon, Google, and uh, the Western world. And I suspect China probably has um, its own quantum computing um, capability already. So they're not very widely available, um, but they are, I think, taking people by surprise where they're becoming more and more advanced quicker than what people thought. So nuclear fission is always a decade away or always 20 years away, um, but quantum computing has really stepped up recently. Um, and it's very much coming a thing where um, big organizations, the banking sectors or um, investing into it, Toshiba and Fujitsu, just all of these big name brands are having some kind of quantum input. Um, there are even teams now that have managed to send quantum based communications down standard fiber optic cables as well. Um, again, they are susceptible to the noise problem, which just plagues quantum computing in general. So um, they even say that quantum computers will harness compute power from other dimensions. Um, you would probably have to subscribe to the many worlds um, theory of quantum physics um, 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 to get along with that. Um, but whatever way you look at it, they are super, super powerful. And the concern is that they're going to be able to break all of our um, standard encryption that we have. So where does that actually leave um, all of us today? So ultimately, the general view is, is that we are going to be able to create post quantum cryptography, as it's called, which is good enough cryptography that's still going to be able to fend off quantum computers, or at least keep it at bay. Um, so that is a lot of noise that you hear coming out that we are going to be able to do something about it. And when quantum computing is available for the nefarious teams, I'm not completely sure that's going to happen in my lifetime. I hope that would not happen in my lifetime. Um, you know, I, I, I think we're going to be okay. I think the people that have access to quantum systems um, uh, and if they can break encryption are going to be some of the bigger Western nations and bigger organizations. You just may have to take a view on um, nation states like China in terms of how um, uh, they use technology like this in the future. But that said, it doesn't look like there's anywhere that's a um, an imminent threat. Um, and I think we are looking decades away before we need to start even thinking about it. Um, and I was even reading this morning uh, that the NSA in America 
have effectively given instructions that they are not expecting or wanting anyone for budgetary reasons um, to be able to use any form of quantum um, secure encryption because they just don't see it as a threat currently. But it is an interesting one to watch um, and there's various other um, YouTubers online that can speak about this more than I uh, can, but it's um, definitely an interesting space, um, but it doesn't feel like it's going to be a problem for some time.